In this video, I'm going to get you started on the flange bearing project. We're in chapter 8. This is project 8.2. Now, the first thing we're asked to do is to open the Imperial prototype drawing file, and then we'll save as and name it flange bearing. We're going to do all the drawing in the model tab, which is the area with the black background, just like we've done in all the other projects that we've worked on. So. I've, uh, let's click over here to AutoCAD, and I've got it open. I've already got it saved as flange bearing. Let's take a look at, look at the layers that we're given in this file. So we already have center, we have dimensions, we have hidden, isometric, visible. We've got most of the layers that we need. What we're missing in that layer list is all of the layers that we need for our section views. And remember the section views are um, the, the two layers that we created in the previous project in the tool holder section project would be the cutting plane layer and the hatch layer. So let's come in here and go to layer properties and we'll go ahead and create those layers. So I'll click on new and let's name this one hatch. Any color, as long as you stay within the index colors here, you can choose any one of these colors. We plot in monochrome, so um, any one of these colors will do. We want to leave the line type as continuous and the line weight as default. I'm going to click on new again and this time we're going to name this one cutting plane. Again, any color will do. The line type, we need to load in a line type, the same one that we did before and we're going to choose dashed x2. Now that we've loaded it into the drawing, we need to select it say okay that sets that one current here and our line weight we're going to go ahead and make that line weight 0.6 so our dash lines that cutting plane line is going to be a lot thicker just like our visible lines are a lot thicker as well so now that we've got those layers created we can come back here what we need to do is figure out the necessary views to fully describe this object and then which views are going to be represented as the top and the bottom um, and so looking at this, it actually, we, we really don't get any additional information by showing that side view. So we don't wanna waste our time drawing views that are not necessary. So we'll just have a top view and a front view. And I really feel like you could make an argument for which one of these views is your top or your front. Um, I think that if we chose the front view to be this, uh, where it looks like circles with the arcs, that's a lot of information that we're gonna get here. If we choose that as our front view, our top view is gonna be kind of an upside down version of this. If this is our top, then we're looking at the, uh, if this is our front, when we rotate it to look at the top, um, our top view is basically gonna be upside down from the way it's represented here. If we choose this as our front view, uh, showing the height of the three. We can see how wide these things are. The top view would have the circles. Um, I really think you could go either way on this one. I'm going to choose my front view. In this video, I'll just choose the front view to be this one here where I see all the different circles. Now, looking at that, I do know that the overall uh, from center to center for these outer circles is going to be eight. These circles have counter bores to them. So we've got both of these have a counter bore. That means there's a depth of one drilled down, or I'm sorry, a diameter of one drilled down just one or 0.125. Then we've got 0.75 that goes all the way through it. So, and that says two times because there's two different circles like that. So this is the, um, di the dimensions that we're gonna use. When we see it from the top view, it's just gonna look like two circles. When we look at this one, we've got a countersink. So we've got a diameter of 1.5 drilled all the way through here. We have another diameter of 2.5 at 82 degrees. That's gonna be, um, coming down. We don't know what the depth of that is, so it's important um, to go ahead and um, we'll, we'll, we'll figure this out as we go. So just, just starting off, I'm going to draw the front view in this video, and we will just do where it looks like it's circles. So I'll come back over here. We're going to set the visible layer current. And we're still going to do an isometric off to the right hand side here. So when we're doing this project, I'm going to turn off my grid. When we're doing this project, we're just going to do the front view and the top view over here. 
So I'll draw a line. We can always move those views around if needed. I'm going to start off with a line. I need to turn on my ortho to make sure it's a perfectly straight line. I can click on this icon or press F8. And we're going to do it eight. So that's a length of eight. We have several different circles that we're going to draw in here. So I'm going to start the circle command. I'm going to do diameter, circle diameter. And we'll start with the midpoint. And this circle right here has a diameter of four. Looks good. We've got another circle inside of it. So we have the diameter of four and we actually have a couple of other diameters inside of here. So we'll do a diameter, same midpoint. Remember we've got that counter sink. So that counter sink has a 2.5 diameter. It has another circle. The hole that goes all the way through it is 1.5. All right, that looks really good. Now we've got a circle over here. The outer arc of this has a radius of one. So I'll actually start the circle radius in a radius. Radius of one, enter. Now I can do several things. I can draw another circle over here with a radius of one. I can get all of these drawn and then copy them over. I could mirror them over, whatever you see. However, there's no right or wrong way to do this. I'm gonna draw them all on one side and then I'll just copy them over. So I've got a circle with a diameter. Here's our counter bore. So we've got a diameter of 0.75. Goes all the way through it. Got another one. And this, that 7.75 goes all the way through, but this one diameter of one only goes through the um, at, at a depth of 0.125. Okay, so now that I've got this drawn, I need to connect these lines with the tangent. So I'm going to come to my O snaps. Uh, for, I have nearest on, I'm going to turn that off, but I'm going to make sure that I have the tangent turned on and I'll draw a line. And notice, well, it's wanting, let's see, is my tangent on? Yeah, so it, you can't really start with a tangent, so if I shift, hold down the shift key and right click while I'm holding that key down, if I say tangent, it kind of forces it to be a tangent, but do you see how it does a little dot, dot, dot right there? That just is just saying it's a deferred tangent. You can't start with a tangent, so notice as I'm moving this around, it doesn't exactly, it's kind of guessing where it's going to start that line. So that's a deferred tangent. It'll end up going to the tangency. It just, you can't start with a tangent. So I'm going to um, shift right click again and I'm going to hit tangent. And this time it's kind of a deter deferred tangent here as well. But notice as I'm moving this, the other line's kind of moving. So I'll click right here and it just calculates generally from that area to this area, it makes the tangent, uh, the, the points tangent to the circle. So again, shift right click, tangent. I get that deferred tangent, just click generally where you want it to be. And then shift right click, tangent. There we go. That looks great. So I actually don't, well, let's go ahead and mirror this. So I'm gonna mirror. I was gonna copy, but since I have those three circles, plus I wanna go ahead and take those tangency lines, I'm going to just mirror it straight down the middle here. Make sure that you're making a perfectly vertical line. Doesn't matter if you go up or down, just make sure you're making a perfectly vertical line for the mirror reflection line. And it wants to know if I want to erase the source subject. I do not. I don't want to get rid of the original one that I selected, so I'll press enter. It defaults to saying no. I'll get rid of this. And now I'm going to just trim out the part that I don't need, which would be kind of the inside of those circles. So from the, this view here, we're going to call this our front view, but looking at it this way, we don't see any of the depth of the counter bores. We don't see the depth of the counter sink. Um, all we can see is just concentric circles. So we have diameter of four is the overall cylinder. We've got the um, 1.5 goes all the way through. We've got the 2.5, that's the angled counter sink. 
And then we have these two. This smaller one goes all the way through. It's got a diameter of 0.75. And then this represents our counter bore. It's a larger diameter, a diameter of one, but ultimately that's only gonna have a depth of 0.125. But that's it. I've got my front view drawn. Let's go put in center marks. So I'll set my center layer current and I know there's a couple of ways that you can do center marks. I actually prefer, if you came over to the annotate tab, you could click on this center mark here. I'm not a big fan of that one. You, you, you're welcome to use that. The one that I like is when you do the dimension pull down and you go to center mark and you click on it here. So dimension, center mark. And here we want to click on the outer arc. Dimension center mark click on the outer one i'm actually going to do the same thing for the inner one notice how it's it's supposed to go out just a little bit past the edge but it came came way out past the edge here so what i always do is for both of these i'm going to erase this longer line press delete and then i'll put another center mark right on top of it for this one so notice how it comes just out past the edge the way the other ones do. So dimension, center mark. Now we do have those lines right on top of each other. When that happens, if you have lines that are on top of each other, like in this case, I've got this line here and I've got the shorter line right there. There is a command and I'm gonna go to the home ribbon under the modify panel pull that down it looks like a little broom this is overkill but what it does is delete duplicate objects I can highlight this whole entire thing press enter say okay just I always leave it at all the default and what that does is if you have lines on top of lines they're duplicates it just gets rid of them gets rid of them compresses them down into one line so this looks great. Now we're done with the front view. In the next video, I'll walk you through the top view. And in that top view, we're also going to actually see and draw the counter bore and the counter bores and the countersink.